Hello guys, here's Madame OK and today I want to introduce you to painting, landscape painting using both brushes and palette knives. We will start with um, establishing the line that will divide the sky and mountains from the water. And the image that I have in mind is the beautiful landscape of Canadian Rocky Mountains. We want to have um, mountains in the back. And I'm not going exactly by the mountains that are in the particular place of Lake Louise. Uh, it will be easier for me just to create my own. So I'm using um, certain reference, but in a very, very loose way. So that I can apply certain changes that will make my painting looking better for the particular scale of my painting and format. So I think I want to include a nice island here and that would be my invention and then the trees on the top that I will apply later on. I have to have this beautiful reflection on the water and maybe there will be a couple of trees coming here and clouds. We will see. Let us start with the sky and then maybe mountains and then we move to the water. So I will be using white mixed with a little bit of blue and I have to make sure that the color of the sky will be a little bit different than the water. So that will be my sky and I'm applying very even strokes with my palette knife. You see I cross the mountain but that's okay. I will be able to change it later on. So it's my white here. Again I need a little bit more of the color here. So you see I mix them together but I don't want to have really just one even color so you can see the difference actually what I think what I got here was more of cobalt color I didn't realize actually oh whoa even the ceruleum mixes in it you see this particular color has more red in it that's my that's my um, ultramarine blue the other one it's really on the cool side and that will be my ceruleum okay so you can see here the strokes that I apply are quite even. Let's see, should we go with the clouds? Maybe we'll put one here. And in case when we want to uh, get rid of it, we can easily cover it with the blue. So one will go very nicely placed behind the mountain, like this. See? We can also see that um, the paint goes on the masking tape. So when we will be removing, Masking tape, we have to be careful that we don't rip the paper. When we have this one here, I think we can put another set of mountain uh, clouds in the back of the mountain here. And I think we can apply the color such as a little bit of the purple. See, the purple would be okay in the mountains. And I want to mix the purple with the brown. So I'm getting here on the side with those two colors. And I mix white in, in the combination so you see it's the colors looks quite nice but it's mm, brownish 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 I need a little bit more of my purple and then a just tiny bit of black to cool it down see so the color gets a little bit grayish fantastic I always like to have the light coming from this direction so we have to have the peaks or sides of the mountains the plains a little bit lighter on this side this side the right side Okay, so right now just the application of paint, very fast, it's probably will be in the back, the mountain, of the back of this one here, see slightly changing colors, moving the strokes in different directions to get the effect that we intend to have. Yeah, this section, this section can be a little bit darker. See, notice uh, the direction of my strokes. It's, I'm not really going for rounded mountains. Oh, it's a little bit green there. See that? Rocky mountains. Rocky mountains are very, very tall mountains and then require the, that we go with those jigsaw lines, I call them. Yeah. Okay, so this side will be a little bit darker here 
how I'm doing it here. I still will lighten this part here, but for that I will still wait until this mountains is done and I can make then decision how will I approach the other side. See, this has to be a bit and this is too even to me. So go there and this has to be still moved a little bit more. It's a nice play of colors, okay? Let's see, still darker. I have to move my palettes. I use the styrofoam plates. It's just more convenient. I'm, I'm an oil painter. So if I use um, if I use uh, acrylic paint, I like to use styrofoam plates not to cover my other palettes. But here, and then I definitely need to get lighter this section. So you see, I'm coming back. And shaping my mountains, adding them colors, playing with the colors. Let's see, a little bit like this. Something is happening there. Really, really lots of different colors. Fantastic. So, lots of lots of action. We can put those mountains in the bag. See, like this. A little bit more on the side here coming. Make sure that really here you watch the rigidity that you'll keep it. Right? And then a little bit of it coming maybe higher. Like this. I like what is going on here. So I'm placing a little bit of the blue here. I'm still working a tiny bit more. I want to be 100, not 100% 100 satisfied, but I still think I can bring a little bit more into my mountains and I certainly want to do it. You okay, see darker here. Then I can bring a lighter tone right away here. See like this. And then that's actually not too bad. Now from this step we want to move to the water. Oh let me see. Still want to push some of the colors here. See this different blue. Now I will have some green stuff coming in the front and I, when I say green stuff that means trees, not green stuff as green stuff like this here and the same on the other side. Look at this. See? Not shooting too much into the height, just going nicely here like this and then a little bit of the purple on the bottom and I'm moving it here okay very good now the next step is like you see the trees will come here but I need to have high ground and I have to move to the nice orangey color so I will use this beautiful paint which is called oxide red you see I move it here and then maybe a little bit of my buff color into it and then mixing it together, I will apply it just in this section. So I think I can get a little bit darker. See, mixing, mixing, mixing. And just the palette knife. Nice work with palette knife. And the same on this side here. You like stripes. And then maybe even a little bit of it. I don't know why, but I like to apply it here for now. I still want to go to my ground in this section because it will be later very difficult to apply it. And since I want to have an island here, so I certainly can have this color here. See later, I apply some green paint and so on. But right now, that's what I want to have. Um, from there on, I want to move to the blue color. So my palette has to, palette knife has to be clean. That will be my color of blue. See, that is one, one of many. Okay, notice I still work with palette knife. I have a little bit of my green here and that's what I will need on the water in this section because I will have some trees here. I already anticipate that they will be there and I want a beautiful reflection. Now I'm going back to my blue and I certainly have to cut this part. It's too much. See? So very easily right away on the spot we were able we were able to cut the color that we not intended to have to such a degree. 
of a Dempsey. So very easily, we'll just leave a little bit of the, like a stripe of the color there that is present, not too much. And this is a very nice ground for us. See, so that this island will be here. Remember, there will be not just this color. There will be just a little bit of it on the ground, like on the bottom, sorry, but just, just a tiny bit. And now I want to have this color, this purple color coming on the bottom here as a reflection. You see, like this one here. This is still too strong because of the contrast of the colors, but it won't be once we introduce the other colors. Fantastic. And another thing here, and I show you the small trick. You can bring the white onto the paint as long as it's wet and blend it, you see, for the reflection. I bring some, some of my green here. You see this beautiful iridescent green because I think it can work on my on my water. Um, the next step will be the work on the trees. So I'm using purple mixed with dark dark green, and my job is now to bring some of this color on the mountains. Because remember, on the, we always have green trees on the bottom of the mountains and then they disappear. I mean, the mountains become so sharp uh, going up, up, up that the trees, there's less and less trees present until we will not have any of them and just the snow on the, on the peaks. Maybe still a little bit more of those trees coming here. I definitely need to see more of the trees down. See on this line here. And still a little bit more there. Wow, that really looks good. Some of those will come, you see a little bit there in the back, but very, we don't want to have too much. So just a little bit, little bit, little bit. Now I want to bring some other colors into my trees. So you see, I start blending and creating the effect that they are the trees with lighter colors on the top, especially on the bottom part here. See, like this. Very good, and the same will happen here. Now I will mix a little bit blue with my green. You see, and going up, up, up. I want to have those cooler colors of the trees. Definitely there. See, like this. And like this and well, even come down. So I bring some of the red here because I want to brighten my colors here. Still like the blue of the mountain, you see, bringing the cooler colors. Very good. Now the island. So we need the darker color on the bottom for sure here because it's an island, right? With lots of lots of trees on it and we will create now the tree. So the first tree will come big one. I want to cross the cross the space with it. So this is coming here, dark, big, prominent tree. See, maybe I should already move to the to the brush. I think that would be easier for me. Okay, my brown color is coming here, like this, and I bring some of the blue on one side. See, one side I want to have a more blue, and that will be the other side because here I have light. So definitely coming here with this very pronounced tree. Whoa, and maybe I would even cross my space actually for more interesting painting. Why not? Right, I like it like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Now we will have some other trees coming here. So will be another tree coming here. Now we move to the branches. See, one, two. Okay, we want to have lots of fun. See, another one here. Then we go another one here, another, another, another. And then, see how heavy the paint is. And that's still, it's okay. Oh, I moved here. It's going a little bit too much. Probably have to clean it up. Notice. 
Hmm. A little bit, then we have to come back with the paint. Or maybe I make this branch longer, you see? Yeah, why not? Will be quite a long branch. That's fine. Okay. So you see long branch, long branch coming here. And then we have sub branches. Oh, I call them sub branches. Okay, like this. Another one here. So this trunk really has to be a prominent one. See? Really big and heavy. Okay. Like this. Maybe even with some of the red on this side that we can really see it. We have to put some foliage on it. So, what I want to do, I first mix a little bit of my brown with purple, as usual, you see, and then, then I'm going with the foliage. I'm making this grouping of the leaves or needles here, like you see, like this. See the purple color here looks so good, and a little bit more. You see, we also have to cover the trunk. We can't have all those, see this, for example, will be another, another branch just facing us. I'm bringing purple here and then I will apply green on it see what is happening here wow that's quite rich the same on the island here you see the same we need some other colors we can't just leave it everything the way it is so we need to bring some bushes here right like you see huh some of it certainly make it richer i would even apply believe me or not i would even bring some of the blue yeah, but i need to have definitely in this section see my tree has to be rich okay not just one one column i need to really spread some of the other colors once i establish the base you see those needles, the rest will be read exactly the same way. Okay, so I even apply a little bit of red here, see, to make it more colorful and really bring the attention to my trees. Actually, the mountain almost disappear. Okay, they're in the back, we know that they are there, but not as prominent as you would think. So this, this is quite nice. Now this section is good. We bring some purple here as well. I want to come and make up oh, the section of the tree that you can see. See that the tree is there. Uh, now there will be another tree coming here, but because of the foliage, you will not see. Like we assume that this is part of the tree, right? Here I want to make the section definitely darker. And then we need to have some reflections here. But before, like you see, I still apply some of the later colors on the top. See, really pronouncing, especially this section, because we decided that the light will come there. So you see, like this. Lots of action, lots of lots of going, especially on this, this first tree, right? So it's very, very rich. I still want to come into the water and, re and recreate, you see this reflection in the water. So very, that will be my way of doing it here. You see, I'm scrapping with the knife and making the colors a little bit darker. Okay, coming like this. And then I can also emphasize some of those colors, like you see, adding here and there the colors to make my painting more alive. So I see definitely the color will come here so that the mountains can reflect onto the water. Okay, see like this, and there will be the other pink. I need to have more. And a little bit of the black on the side. See, like this, and then my mountains and my sky. I think the sky can be quiet because the tree is so rich that when I will, um, I don't want to have too much action going on now, right? It's enough that the tree is bringing us lots of lots of energy in the painting. And then this is definitely the section of the water. And then we'll come here. See, like this. 
little bit more here. We have all those beautiful colors coming through. See, so we take this is the step in which we bring reflection on the water. Okay, I will apply a little bit heavier white in this section for the contrast and contrabalance the heaviness and richness of the tray. And then I definitely will need the blue here with this nice green color mixed together, you see? Like this, bringing me the effect of the water of the of the uh, Lake Louise. Mm -hmm. So I'm going through and bringing back my blow onto it. And then I'm scrapping it here, bringing all those different colors that I saw there. Wow, look at this. And then back to my blue. And bringing a little bit of the brown into it. You see? That's quite good. Now a little bit more of the purple here on the bottom of the mountain on the ground like this and then again still a little bit more of the purple see like this then I will scrape it a little bit because I don't want to have it too much of the black so again going back to my purple then applying it here and then my nice color will come there my brown See, and then I'm moving it, moving it, moving it, moving it, maybe scraping a little bit, because when it's too much, it's too much, and we have to admit it. This mixture here on this side, and I'm bringing it back, I'm bringing it back to this part, see? So, like this. And then bringing my colors back. See, something that's going on. Now, the mountains. The mountains still, We'll need some of the colors to simplify them to do much, just, just a little bit. So let us move to the brush and with the brush we'll go for the tiny bit of black. See, some sections definitely need to be cooled down. This section here I think we can go see and simplify it because the tree seems to be to take a focal point in our painting. It's simplified. I think we should simplify this part here. It's a little bit too, too rich. We, we can have a little bit busier here, but I think on this section, we definitely need to quiet it down. And the same in this section. I bring more of this blue. See, like it will go together. This is fine. So let's see, should we even go more with the paint here? Maybe. See, I never can, can stop, never, 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 you see, I want to leave it a little bit more on the other side, I definitely need to be, have a lighter paint on this side here, okay, like this, look at this, and then quieter, go ahead. so yes we need those reflections on the water but then the rest of the colors can be quiet now look at this how rich it became still just the last touches here just the last ones. So that means that now we're really, really finished. I hope that you enjoyed the process and will work on your own painting in the same style. Have a good day and see you next time. Bye.